Hi guys, my name is Terry. In this video, I'm going to go through with you from four additional mathematics textbook questions for chapter one function intensive practice 1.1. So if you enjoyed this video, can you like, subscribe, or leave us a comment if you have any question. Okay, let's get straight to the first question. So which are the following relations of function? State your reason. Very simple. Now we know that a function is defined as a relation for which every object has exactly one image. So in this case, a 4 has one image, 5 has one image, 8 has an image as well. So we know it, each object has exactly one image, although 4 and 8 share the same image, right? So is this a function? Yes. Okay, what is the reason? Every object has exactly or you can say only one image. Okay, second one. Let's look at negative four. Negative four has two images. So it doesn't fulfill the condition for function. Yeah, every object must have exactly one image. Uh, negative one has one image. Three has one image. Seven has one image. But we know it's not a function. Why? Because negative four has two images. All right? Okay, for C, now you can see that 2 has one image, 6 has one image, 9 has one image. All of them share the same image then. But it's not a problem having uh, all objects sharing the same image. Yeah? So yes, it is still a function. Why? Because every object has exactly one image. Okay, simple. Now moving on to question number two. Using the vertical line test, determine whether the following graphs are function. Okay, so the first one, remember vertical line test basically means we draw a vertical line downwards. We determine the number of times the line cuts the curve. If the line cuts the curve at three points, simply means for a single value of x for the single object of x, let's say x1, I call it, you have three different images or three different y value so for one object with three images is actually called one to many so it doesn't fulfill the condition for function remember function is a relation for every object for which every object has one image in this case it has three images so is this a function no okay second one b draw a vertical line you can draw anywhere and you notice here it cuts at two points yeah so for this x value you have two y value again it's a one to many Right, so it doesn't fulfill the condition that is every object must have one image, so it has more. The third one I draw this way, you can cut here, or you can even cut in front here. Now you notice that you only have one y value for one particular x value. So is this a function? Yes, it is a function. Alright, let's move on to number three. The diagram on the right shows the images for certain elements that it is the relation function state of reason? Okay, let's look at 7, 7 map on to 49, 6 map on to 36, negative 6 also map on 36, 7, negative 7 map on to 49 again. So is this a relation? Everybody has only one image, so yes, give a reason. Every object has exactly one image. Alright, B. State the domain and range. Remember, domain is the element, all the element in the first set put together. So um, we just add in the set notation, minus 7, minus 6, 6, and 7. I'll just arrange in ascending order. Okay. Uh, that is for your domain. Okay. Your range, this is domain. Uh, your range will be 49 and 36. So we write 36 first. Followed by 49. Using the function notation, write the relation uh, between the set. Okay, so we can see uh, every x value here, you square it. 7 squared is 49, 6 squared is 36, negative 6 squared is 36, negative 7 squared is 49. So it's actually a square. So we can write like this fx arrow x squared. So this is the function notation. But by the way, you can also write in this form. Yeah? It is also a valid way of writing function. Alright, let's move on to question number four. 
Now this involving modulus function. The diagram on the right shows the graph of function fx equals to 2x minus 1, minus 4 with the modulus uh, for the domain of x between 0 and 5. So you're supposed to find the value of t. Now t is your y value when your x value is 5. So we can say t is basically f5. So we're going to put 5 inside your modulus. So this is 10 minus 4, which is 6. Modulus of 6 is just 6. Okay, now how about the second one? Find the range of f based on the given domain. Now, your domain is your x value. Your domain is from 0 to 5. Range is your y value. It's from 0 to t. Since t is 6, so we say your range of fx is between 0 to 6. Okay, next we are finding the range of values of x for which fx is less equal to 4. Now they change the range here. Your range is now 0 to 4. Okay, I want to find my possible x value, my domain. So now, first of all, let us take fx equals to 4. Right? So we solve for x value. Now, modulus 2x minus 4 is now 4. When you open up a modulus, there is a negative and positive. I hope you know this uh, because, for example, when you take negative 4, the modulus is 4. When you take positive 4, the modulus or the magnitude of this is also 4. So when you see modulus of x equals to 4, x can take two values. x can be negative 4 or positive 4. But for this case, we are not finding x. We are finding 2x minus 4. And 2x minus 4 can either be 4 uh, negative 4 or 4. So when you bring this over, 2x is 0, x is 0, or we say 2x is 8, x is 4. Now take note that x equals 0, we already have it here. So the second one, it should be 4 here. And now you're finding the range of values of x. That means you're finding this value here, the domain actually, we call it. So we say x is between 0 and all right okay next one number five so a stone fell from height of 81 meter above the ground the stone the height of stone is assumed to be this ht equals to 81 minus 9t squared so state the height of the stone when t is 1 over 3 so you want to put 1 over 3 inside so for the first one uh, roman 1 this will be 81 minus 9, 1 over 3 square. So 1 over 3 square is 1 over 9. Yeah. 9 times 1 over 9 is 1. 81 minus 1 answer is 80 meter. Second one, when your t is 1, so you get 81 minus 9, 1 square. 1 square is 1. 9 times 1 is still 9. 81 minus 9, 72. The third one, when t equals to 2. So you put 2 inside 81 minus 9, 2 square. 2 square is 4. Um, 9 times 4, 36. 81 minus 36, 45 meter. Okay, next one. When will the stone hit the ground? The stone will hit the ground when the height is 0. So you take 81 minus 90 square, let it be 0. Um, here I think it's better we bring the 90 square over, but we rewrite this as 81 t square is now 9, square root of 9 is 3. You don't have to put plus minus, uh, time is always positive, so we take t equals to 3. Alright, so that's the end of this uh, video, but in, if you enjoy our video, can you like and subscribe, and also if you want to get a uh, more practice workbook, we have it in our Shopee account, you can actually find us from uh, Shopee, yep, I just show you the end here. There you go. Find us for subscription to Hope you enjoyed this video. See you in the next one.